Well, um, yeah, I completely agree, and I think that's something they did do a good job later of in the game. And anytime you can get pressure up the middle and then get those defensive ends swarming in from the side and contain the quarterback in the pocket, that's where you're going you're gonna to start getting sacks or those bad decisions. And that's something that's really going to help the secondary out where we know yeah. there may be some young guys back there. If you can get pressure, make the quarterback get rid of the ball before he wants to, that's when they tend to make mistakes. So I think it kind of works hand-in-hand yeah. hand together. And I think that's something that if we can do blitzing – that's great, but if you can get that pressure without the blitz and committing that extra defender, that's going to help out that secondary and that linebacking core so much more, especially when we yeah. face more of these teams down the road that continue to have these dual-threat quarterbacks that can throw and run. You would have watched the film from last week and saw what worked <laughs> and tried to do it again because yep. when you throw the ball every play, that's really almost playing into our defensive strength because that's what we go against every day in practice. So you, yep. if you have a running back or offensive line that can run the ball, that's going to be you know something that we're not used to seeing and I think that was evident last week against Navy because we were not used to a ground game that they had and especially the option. Rio did just miss the wide receiver so hopefully we'll improve on that and hit those big plays here in the next couple games but also too with the run game um, I agree I agree with you we can do a better job of mixing up the plays and I think also too we're going to need that running attack especially when it gets into third and short situations or down at the goal line because our running backs did a great job today but sometimes you just have to line up in the eye formation and pound the ball and get a yard or two and that's a lot tougher when you're in the shotgun. No, I, I, what is the Big East really getting with these football teams? <laughs> They're not getting much if they play like that in the Big East. If they if that you have a Houston team that goes and plays at West Virginia, they're going to lose a hundred to nothing mm -hmm. next year. They're yeah. not getting the top quality teams, and that's why it hurts so much for our program to feel like we're one of the upper echelon teams, you know, out there or one of the upper echelon teams that should have the chance to take that big step up, and we're not getting that opportunity. And really, all you know, the fans can do at this point is hope that the administration can put us in the position for the next realignment or next opening in the Big East to get in. And then this team just has to continue to win and hope that'll be enough when that time comes. Well, and all those mistakes that we did see today that we got away with are going to have to be gone or minimized next week because they're going to be playing a top 10 team. And, and really for the next three games at Southern Miss and North Carolina, you're going to be facing a higher level of, of competition. So this team has talent and we have guys returning from suspension. And like I said, that anything can happen in college football. There's upsets all the time. And I have confidence that this team will improve a lot from week one to week two. But we just have to make sure that happens next week because um, you, know, you want to make a step in the right direction each and every week. And hopefully by the end of the year, you'll have a great record and go to a bowl game and contend for championships. So that's something that this team needs to focus on is just the old cliche, getting better every day and making sure that you, know, you focus on one game at a time. And they got the first one out of the way and now it's on to South Carolina. And Pat, Coach Butch Davis and his offensive staff have really done a great job of keeping the Pirate defense off balance, mixing the run in the pass, and keeping the ball away from star defensive tackle Linville Joseph on the interior. Coach Todd Fitch is really doing a great job getting the ball in his playmaker's hands, and Chris Johnson is that playmaker for the Pirates. With his 4-3 speed, he's really the one guy in the field that's going to stretch a defense out and scare the Tar Heel defense. And right now, the Tar Heel defense is on the ropes. And special teams is really the forgotten part of the game. Most people focus on offense and defense, but most games can be won or have a big impact in the kicking game. And right now the Pirates are dominating that side of the game, not only on the scoreboard with their offensive output, but on special teams. And these plays by TJ Lee have really made a huge impact on this game. Pro Bowl tight end Jake Walker, who's in the final season of a whopping contract. A 10-year career at a crossroads, owner of all those team records, a certain future Hall of Famer with, of course, a surgically repaired right knee. Huge impact on the Hawks offense. 